What to do, everybody? I am about to share with you the eight hacks that you can use in your morning to make yourself more productive and give yourself more of an energy boost and purpose throughout your day. So, let's go. Welcome to the Nick Ingersoll Show. If you're anything like me, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get up in the morning. So I've been ruthlessly testing a ton of different ways to sort of boost my energy in the morning and also give myself just more energy throughout the day. You know, starting your morning off correctly really does change your life in a significant way. And I just kind of wanted to share with you the experiments that I've done and some of the things that have worked for me. And I want to share them with you. So hack number one, your morning starts the the night you go to bed the day before. And what I mean by that is that there are things that you can do and should do before you go to bed to make your morning way, way better. Uh, so the, it starts with packing up the night before. So if you're going to the gym, have all your gym clothes ready, sitting there in your backpack, ready to roll. If you're going to work, have your laptop packed up and also plan everything the night before. Sit down, write down what you want to do the very next day because there's really no reason that you need to be wasting your time picking out your clothes, have your clothes ready, laid out, ready to put on right after your shower and and get to it. You know, there's a lot of time in the morning that people just sort of waste. Oh, what shirt should I wear? Where's my keys? You know, all these things that I've certainly done and I'm sure a lot of you have also done and many of those things can be mitigated by simply planning better the night before when you go to bed. Uh, the second thing is sleep optimization. So, you know, again, uh, following along with the theme that your morning starts the night before you wake up is sleep. And so it, sleep is a highly variable thing. I generally need less of it than most people do. So if I'm getting six and a half hours, I'm good. But I also ruthlessly track my my sleep with an app called the Pillow App. And what it does is it measures how much light sleep, awake time, REM sleep, deep sleep, all these different types of things, and also gives you an output of your sleep quality. So measuring your sleep can really impact the way that you perceive your sleep. A lot of people, you know, they'll say, ah, you know, I need X amount of hours. Oh, I sleep this many hours. But do you really know? do you? Because I didn't. I mean, I was sort of guessing. Oh, I went around, I went to bed around this time. I woke up around X time. And so therefore, I think I slept about seven hours. But are you really? And so using something like the sleep app, there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, it's really going to be able to give you more insight and clarity into the quality of sleep that you are getting. And I've also used a bunch of different hacks to sleep better. So the main thing that I use is a sleep mask. And I do have blackout curtains in my apartment. But the thing is, is it, even if it's a tiny little light on something like a refrigerator or, you know, something else that's powered up, that can actually disrupt your sleep. So wear the sleep mask. I actually measured with and without a sleep mask my sleep quality. And when I use a sleep mask, my quality of sleep jumps about 10% on average. So that's been wildly helpful. Also, if you're one of those people that wake up in the middle of the night and have a really dry mouth and you need to get water or whatever is disrupting your sleep as a result of your mouth being open. You can also wear, uh, well, there's a couple of things. Some people tape their mouths shut at night. I can't do that. I also have a beard, so, you know. But um, it, it also just kind of creeps me out. I don't want to be taping my mouth shut at night. Uh, but there are all other alternatives. You can wear a, uh, what is it, a chin strap. Um, I've used one of these before. It's actually not nearly as scary or weird as, as you think it is. And that actually helps you breathe out of your nose and keep your jaw shut. Now, if you're having a hard time breathing out of your nose, you can also use nasal strips. And yes, you're going to start looking like a little bit of a science experiment Frankenstein situation when you go to bed. But you're not getting you're not doing a photo shoot while you're sleeping you're sleeping so optimize that and you will be very happy uh, as a result in the morning. There's a couple other things like gravity blankets. You also want to keep the temperature of the room between, you know, 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit, something in that range. Keep it cold. Have a blanket on you. Uh, gravity blankets are also pretty cool, um, especially if you have any sort of insomnia. I don't have that problem, really. I have the opposite problem, actually, uh, which we'll get to in a second. But gravity blankets do tend to help or are reported to help a lot. I've used them. Um, I do enjoy them. I probably don't get as much benefit as I would if I was someone that had insomnia. So I would say all those things and also don't look at your phone before you go to bed. Everybody already knows that, but uh, if you're doing that, stop it. 
Okay, so now we're finally waking up. Hack number three is don't use your phone for the first half an hour or hour when you wake up. And some of you have alarms and that's fine. And maybe you want to play an audiobook or music in the morning like I do. But if you don't have the discipline to just not get sucked into the polar vortex of technology and start checking your Instagram and your WhatsApp and your messages and your blah, 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 email, etc., then don't pick it up. You can actually set alarms on your phone. You can go into the settings and say, at such and such time, play this audiobook or this song or whatever. And so you can automate it such that you actually don't have to use your phone to turn those things on in the morning if you have a problem with discipline in that way. So don't use your phone and also don't use your laptop for at least mm, half an hour, hour after you wake up because it can really infiltrate your mind and set sort of a mind virus and set your intention for your day for you instead of you setting it for you. So don't be on your phone. Uh, Hack number four is don't jump into email right away. This is a thing that I've been doing for a long time and I've actually been criticized for and my simple answer to this is, well, you're doing it wrong. Don't check your email for a little while after you start working. When you get to the office, sit down, start working on something productive, open up your mind, start working on something that's important. Don't get into the email because as soon as you open the email, you turn into a firefighter. You're spraying down fires all over the place in that inbox. You're an EMT with just random random people flopping on the table. You're giving mouth to mouth and and all the rest of it to uh, people that need your help. And that's fine, but just keep it uh, a little bit later in the day. Hack number five is get your body engaged. So when you wake up, there's a couple of different ways to do this. And Tony Robbins, you know, I believe he gets in an ice plunge. And man, I love ice plunges. So if I had an ice plunge right next to my bed, that would be the very, very first thing I would do is just wake up, boom, straight into the ice plunge. And I'll tell you what, that's like having a billion milliliters of adrenaline just injected directly into your veins. It's pretty crazy. And if you don't have access to that, then take a cold shower. That also works. If you don't like the cold showers, Try it first. Don't be scared. It won't kill you. You'll be just fine. You can always turn it warmer. Um, you, at least do something, right? You can do 10 push ups, 10 air squats, something to get your blood moving. If you can't do either one of those things, just stretch out for 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes, five minutes. Do something with your body to get it engaged right after you wake up because, after all, you've been laying still for hours and hours. The sixth thing is to visualize your day. And oftentimes you can do this through sort of a meditative process. That's what I do. I'll put on some sort of atmospheric music. I will then sort of go into a meditation visualization session and just sort of visualize what's going to happen in the day. And in in Joe Rogan's words, sort of envision yourself as the superhero of your own life's movie. Like, what would you, the superhero in the movie of your life, be doing in the situations that you're going to face in that day. You got a big meeting coming up. So if I have a big meeting coming up, I visualize myself in that meeting and maybe maybe there's a contentious thing that happens. Maybe there's a great thing that happens and I visualize how I will respond to that situation in the morning through this practice. Whether I'm getting on stage later that day or recording a podcast or, or any number of activities, you know, something stressful might be happening and the better you visualize yourself in those situations, the better you'll actually perform. So I would say do that every single morning when you wake up. And number seven, uh, try some intermittent fasting, which basically means just don't eat until noon or one o'clock, something like that. After all, you've been sleeping for somewhere between five and eight hours-ish for most of us, and you've been fasting the entire time. So extend your fast, and if you get your body used to doing this, you're going to experience some really crazy mental clarity. Now, at the very beginning, you may have a little bit of, you know, stomach gurgly gurks, getting a little angry because it doesn't have the calories inside of it, but your mind will be a super sharp. It's actually quite crazy. And, you know, even if you're training super hard the day before, sometimes your body feels like it needs fuel and that's okay. And if I do feel like that, uh, well, first of all, if you're getting used to intermittent fasting, if you are used to it, you're not really going to have this problem. But if you're not, you know, eat something that's pretty low in sugar, low in carbohydrates first thing in the morning, because your body is going to be able to run on much cleaner fuel and 
not have to worry about all the glycogen stores and all the glucose to process and cloud up that brain first thing in the AM. Ah. Number eight, the eighth hack to make your morning more productive is to put a smile on your face. And I mean literally fake a smile. I know it sounds absolutely insane. And the first couple times you do it, you're probably going to feel like a serial killer. But that's okay, because uh, there's a, a litany of psychological studies that have been done that show simply by altering your physiology, by smiling, you will start to feel happier. It'll send signals to your brain to start producing all the lovely neurochemicals that produce happiness normally, and that's a very interesting hack. It's also a hack if you're feeling down or frustrated or something like that. If you put us, if you <sighs> breathe in, let it out, close your eyes, smile, open your eyes, keep smiling a little bit, you're actually going to feel better. It's pretty weird, and at least I've used this hack a ton of times, and that will make you just a little bit happier in the morning. And those are the eight things that you can do in the morning to boost your self-esteem, your progress, your energy throughout the day. Those are all the things that I do, and I'm continually trying and testing new and different things. So there may be an update to this at some point, but those are the things that I found the most useful. And if you found any of this podcast useful, uh, please subscribe to the podcast. I would really appreciate it. That is essentially what is the lifeblood of me continuing to do this thing. And if you can rate and review this thing as well, that would be super, super dope. And let me know what you think of these types of episodes. You can hit me up on the gram, just at Ingersoll, N-I-K. Uh, the link will be in the show notes. And or go to my website and shoot me a message on the contact form. Either way would be great. Share this with your friends, your family, your bearded dragon, your pet turtle, your pet salamander, or whoever else you think might benefit from taking a listen and as always thank you very much for listening i really 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 do appreciate it, it means the world to me and until next time i'll chat at you then peace